Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a creamy, dreamy Italian meringue buttercream. This is one of my all-time favorite frostings and it is just perfect for cake decorating. Once you learn this recipe, you will be falling in love with this frosting. It decorates cakes to like this mirror smooth finish and it's not too sweet. So all those people who've ever complained about like all that frosting being jaw-wrenchingly sweet, this is the recipe for you. Because this is a meringue-based buttercream, the first thing I have to do before anything else is check and make sure that my mixing bowl has no fat in it. So make sure you clean it out really well. Any little traces of butter and oil from something you made previously could really kind of dampen that meringue. So if you wanna be sure, get a little bit of a lemon out and just coat the inside with lemon juice as an astringent. And then, Take a paper towel and wipe the bowl down. Okay. Now I'm confident this has no fat inside, so pop that onto my mixing bowl, and I'm gonna need four room temperature eggs, and I'll be separating the yolks and the whites. So let's crack an egg into a bowl. Just let that white go in there, reserve the yolk. And really clean hands are the very best way to separate egg yolks and egg whites. Okay, the reason I'm doing this in a separate bowl is if I get a bad egg, which can happen every like once in a while, I wanna not ruin all my eggs. So just that bad egg will be separated out. Into the bowl and next egg. Four egg whites in, now let's take a break and wash our hands. Now it's time to put a whisk attachment on, clean again. We're gonna add a dash of cream of tartar, maybe three dashes if you're feeling daring. Cream of tartar is an acid, it's actually derived from winemaking, and what it does is it kind of gives this eggs more structure and makes your meringue a little stiffer. If you don't have it, I've actually made this recipe without, totally fine. You could also add in a couple drops of lemon juice or vinegar which are other acids and do a similar job. So dash, 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 there we go. Can also add in a healthy pinch of salt at this point. And now we're gonna start mixing on low, break those eggs up and increase speed gradually. Let's not forget about the sugar syrup though. We have to get that on the stove. So we're gonna take one cup of sugar. You can use a bit more if you want, a sweeter Italian meringue buttercream. And then one third of a cup of water you can give it like a really quick stir just to dissolve the sugar a bit. And now we're gonna put this over like a medium high heat. And what is the best thing to have for this? A candy thermometer. If you have a candy thermometer, you're waiting till this reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that's the case, this should be at a soft peak stage and you're ready to pour in. If you don't have one though, you can do something called a drop test. Meaning you'll take a drop of the sugar syrup and put it into some cold water. If it forms a soft, kind of like sap-like drip, it's the right temperature. All right, let's put on some heat. When you see your eggs froth up, time to start adding sugar in, but add it in very slowly. A soft cascade of sugar. So just let it go in slow, give it a tap, like it's raining sugar gently, a drizzle. You're adding sugar in slowly because you don't want to deflate the egg whites. You want them to be nice and fluffy and accept that sugar slowly. Let's take a peek. We want soft peak, which is where we're at right now. Nice soft peaks. You see that? Not stiff, a soft Dr. Seuss-like peak. So pretty, I love meringues, they're just beautiful. Once you get to the soft peak stage, you'll Bet your sugar is almost ready, so let's take a look with our candy thermometers. All right, so let's take a look here. All right, that's at 240. This is the part where you have to be very careful because this sugar is hot. 240 degrees is like third degree burn time. All right, so mixer on low, and we're gonna drizzle this in slowly and carefully. A slow, slow drizzle. The sugar is cooking the eggs and stabilizing them, so you're gonna get this amazing silky meringue, which is actually great for decorating pies and cakes too, if you'd like a lighter option. Okay, get all that sugar out of there. So now let's increase the speed just a bit. 
If you feel the bowl, it is hot. These eggs are really, really, really hot. And I'm gonna stop this just to show you so you can see how amazing and beautiful Italian meringue is. So, give it a little whip. Look at this, it's totally not ready yet. It's very soft, but it's so silky and shiny and delicious. A lot of people ask me if I absolutely have to use a standing mixer for this recipe. And I guess the answer is no, you could use a hand mixer. However, this meringue has to run for like 15 to 20 minutes for it to cool down because you cannot add the butter in until the meringue is room temperature. If you're short on time, which I often am, pack the bowl with ice or frozen peas or frozen vegetables, whatever, just to get it to cool down more quickly. All right, I know I'm being kind of a dork, but I have to show this to you again now that it's a bit more set up. Look at this meringue. Do you see those razor sharp edges? It is gorgeous here. I'll do another dip. Look at that. It's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let this run. Come back to you when you're room temp. My meringue is room temperature, which means it's time to add in that whole pound of unsalted room temperature butter. Can you add less butter in? Nope. If you really don't want the calories, decorate your cake with a meringue. Okay, so we're gonna mix this on low and add in our butter a tablespoon at a time. I like to think of it as dropping coins into a wishing well, but it's butter and meringue. In you go. Just let the butter incorporate a bit before adding in the next piece. All right, I'm gonna show you what this looks like now because this is like the panic stage. People are like, we'll see this. And even the meringue had more structure than this, this like halfway made buttercream. You might have cause to panic if you didn't know. It's all gonna be okay. So just remember, it's all gonna be okay. All right, next stick. Let me show you what three sticks of butter looks like. Oh no, what is this nonsense? This is sad, this isn't buttercream, it's ruined. No, it's not ruined, it just needs that extra stick. So, even though this looks sad, it's looking exactly right. Don't panic. All right, back on you go. Okay, let's take a look now. Oh, this looks more buttercreamy, it has more structure. You can see there, it's stiffened up. Still not all the way together though. So we're gonna let it run, but don't forget to scrape that bowl down because there is pure meringue at the bottom of it and you don't want that. Okay, this is whipped up for a while and if you notice any problems, like, oh, there's little clumps of butter in here or it's still too soupy, John, even though I added in four sticks of butter, pop it into the fridge for a few minutes, take it out, or just keep whipping. You can't over whip this really, so if you just let that mixer keep running, it'll come out okay. So here, yes, oh my gosh, so good. I'm gonna show you a close up of this so you can take a look. Amazing creaminess here, it's so nice. All right, this buttercream is totally done, except I haven't flavored it yet. It's a big batch, so if I was using this for cupcakes, I only need half of it, which means I get to save half of it and have it for later, instant frosting. All you do is put it in a sealed container or a zipping bag and then it can be in the fridge for two weeks or the freezer for like two months. When you're ready to use it, let it come to room temperature and give it a whip. I have to tell you, there's a whole section on whipping because this is some Italian buttercream I made last week. It's been living in the fridge. I let it come to room temperature overnight and now it's ready except when I open it, it is gonna look like a horror story. It's not gonna be silky and beautiful. It'll have tons of little bubbles. So what do you do? All you do is give it a quick whip. You can do it by hand or use a mixer, just for like maybe 30 seconds. Put that over there. And now you should see that you have a much better consistency. You see that, the edge of the bowl, nice and smooth. You have to wake this buttercream up just with a quick whip. 
If you're using vanilla, rose water, almond extract, orange blossom water, anything like that, just pop in like a tablespoon, a few teaspoons, whatever you like, give it a mix and it's ready to use. If you wanna do a fruit-based or chocolate one, it's very similar. Here I have maybe like a third of a cup of melted and cooled dark bittersweet chocolate. I'm just gonna add this into my buttercream. So let's just pour some of this in here. How much? Kind of as much as you'd like. Looks good. And let's give it a whip. Tell me this doesn't look amazing and you're not excited. I won't believe you. Oh my gosh, the color alone. Do you see this? This is amazing. I'm in love <laughs> getting married again. If you're piping and you want even more contrast, put some of that melted chocolate in your piping bag, fill it with this lighter chocolate one and you'll have nice streaks in whatever you pipe. A lot of times in chocolate cakes, the frosting overpowers the delicious cake. This is gonna be a nice compliment. It's not gonna compete. Mm. Mm. That's so good. All right, before I say goodbye, I just wanna show you what this looks like when you pipe it. It is just pure magic. So I'm just using a large closed star tip and my chocolate Italian meringue buttercream. Fill it up. I am the messiest bag filler ever. It's a curse. All right, let's take a look. Squeeze, look at this. And again. Give it a twist. Magic. I am like so obsessed with this. I love Italian meringue buttercream. I hope you do too. You really owe it to yourself to try this recipe out, put it on your favorite cake, and I swear you will be converted. Also, can you just plop this on top of a cappuccino instead of foam? Yes, it's basically an affogato. Just don't tell your friends. Okay, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and by the way, Try this with chocolate. Try this with a fruit reduction. Add some vanilla, add rose water, go to town. You will love it. All right, bye-bye.